The Fremont Canning Company was founded by Frank Daniel Gerber and his father in 1901. The company began with a $10,000 investment. The firm initially marketed canned peas, beans, fruits, and other produce for local farmers. In its early years, from 1901 to 1908, they struggled. In 1908, the economy recovered. The company then became profitable. The firm expanded the plant in the pre-World War I years, 1914 and 1915, from seasonal to year-round production. They were hit by a post-war slump in 1919 to 1920, which slowed the company's sales and growth. In the later 1920s, growth and profits returned when Frank's son Daniel joined the company. The major change in the company's direction came around 1927 to 1928. Daniel suggested that they start making baby food. The idea came from his wife. The couple had a sick baby daughter. A doctor suggested they prepare special food for the girl. The food was made with special cooking and straining methods requiring a lot of labor. The company researched producing and selling baby food. One of the keys to the company's successful marketing was an ad for baby food placed in Good Housekeeping magazine. It got mothers of babies to participate directly in a coupon redemption program. Six cans of soup and strained veggies for a dollar. In exchange for a favorite name of a grocer, they sought to generate enough responses that they could offer proof to grocers of the demand for baby food on the shelves. The idea was successful, and within 60 days, Gerber strained foods had gained national distribution within six months. It also became world known. Fremont Canning Company had created the new U.S. industry of commercial baby food. Now let's go visit and pay our final respects to the Gerbers. They are buried in Maple Grove Cemetery in Fremont, Michigan. So you can see it, so guys, this place is massive. Massive, massive cemetery. It was not easy to pinpoint his grave, but I'm gonna give you guys kind of a basic location if you guys ever want to come to the cemetery and visit him there's a landmark right there the groundskeepers area you'll see this fence like a steel fence metal fence going around the road, road there um, you'll come in and you'll see another like a brick building right there but then if you come in you'll also see this and it says Gerber that is family members of the Gerber family right here but that is not his gravesite his gravesite is a little bit further down and also, you'll see that monument right next to hit the, the Gerber grave site. Mr. Gerber's grave is straight down this way.
you guys can see it right here. It's a big old, big monument there. It says Gerber. Right on it. And here we are. The Gerber family. Daniel Frank Gerber. Gerber went by the name Dan. He was born in Fremont, Michigan in 1898. The son of Frank Daniel Gerber and Pauline Dora Platt. He was educated at St. John's Military Academy in Wisconsin. He attended the school from 1913 to 1916. Gerber served in the Army during World War I. He then attended the Babson College of Business Administration from 1919 to 1920. Later in 1920, he hired in at Fremont Canning Company that his father owned. He was a successful manager, and by 1926, he had become assistant general manager of the company. In the 1950s, the company that Gerber was now running since his dad died in 1952 added three new plants. One in Asheville, North Carolina, one in Rochester, New York, and another in Niagara Falls, Ontario. Dan Gerber appeared as a contestant on the TV quiz program, You Bet Your Life, hosted by Groucho Marx. Well, here I am again with $2,500 for one of our couples, and if any of them say the secret word, the duck will come down and pay him $100. Uh, you may go ahead, uh, Mr. Fetterman. All right, Groucho, we uh, have a housewife for you. She's Mrs. Lila Zanotto. Her partner is a special guest, Mr. Dan Gerber. I'm sure they're ready, so folks, would you come in, please, and meet Groucho Mark. Say the secret word and divide $100. It's a common word, something you always have with you. Mrs. Uh, Lily uh, Tomato and Mr. Dan Gerber, eh? <laughs> Mr. Gerber, I'll start with you. How old are you? 30, er, 57. <laughs> You were going to lie and decided not to, is that it? Well, I tried. Well, you don't look 57. You look more like 37. Where are you from, Dan? Fremont, Michigan. Fremont, huh? Yeah. Now, Mr. Geiber, you're still here, huh? Right. How old are you now? Still 57. Huh? <laughs> Where did you say you, you uh, sprung from? Fremont, Michigan. No. Now, how long have you lived in California? Well, I don't live here. I live in Michigan. You don't live in California. Well, what are you doing up here, Dan? Well, I came out here to be on your program. Really? Well, that's quite a tribute. Michigan is a long way to come just to be on a little quiz show. Are you, are you broke? <laughs> uh, no. But uh, uh, this is Michigan week, and I'm out here to uh, want an opportunity to tell people about the advantages of Michigan. This is Michigan week? I didn't mm -hmm. know that. What's your connection with Michigan? Are you a public official? Oh, I, yes, I'm uh, chairman of the Michigan Economic Development Commission. Well, what do you, uh, what do you develop in Michigan besides frostbite? Well, uh, we develop all the economic advantages of the state, but that's principally industry. I see. Well, it's a waste of time, Dan. When you develop something like Sherry North, come back and see me. <laughs> Why should industry settle in Michigan? What's the matter with California? Well, there's nothing the matter with California. That's what you think. <laughs> well, we have, uh, we have a very good supply of uh, skilled labor. Mm -hmm. We have good labor management relations. It's a good place to uh, live as well as work. I'm sure with fellows like you behind it, it won't be long until Michigan is, is admitted to the union. <laughs> By the way, Dan, do you have a job that earns you a living back there, or do you make what you can in politics? Yes, I'm president of the Gerber Products Company. You mean the Gerber Baby Food Company? Yes. Really? Well, shake hands. <laughs> this is quite a strain, uh, this Gerber. <laughs> um, you know, my daughter Melinda was raised on those little Gerber cans with a picture of the baby on them. Did you know that? Fine. It's always nice to meet a customer. She didn't eat the baby food, she just ate the cans. The cat ate the baby food. 
You just keep on making that strained food, Dan, because I'll be a customer of yours again real soon, you know. Now, don't go rushing to Heather and Luella. <laughs> We're not going to have a baby. It's just that I'm about the age when I can't chew the hard stuff anymore. <laughs> It's been most instructive talking to you two, and Mr. Geiber, when you go back to Minnesota, give my regards. And best wishes for a big Minnesota week. <laughs> Gerber expanded the company, and in 1955, he added a toy line. In 1965, he added a large line of baby-related products. At Gerber's death in 1974, the company claimed it was the world's largest baby food manufacturer. Daniel Frank Gerber died March 16, 1974, at the age of 75 in Fremont, Michigan. Hope you guys enjoyed this video, learning a little bit of the history of the Gerber family. If you guys did, please smash that thumbs up, like, share, definitely subscribe. Check out those links down below, guys, if you want to help on more of my adventures like this one. It definitely helps. I will talk to you guys soon. I will see you guys in the next one. Peace.